to kick us off in this second half, we've got Elle Lunt, and she is going to be um, talking about a wellbeing collection development um, at the University of Exeter. So it's quite interesting in that we've moved from um, chairs and, uh, and, and reading for pleasure, and now we're talking about the collection. So without further ado, I will pass over to Elle, if you're there. I am here, hi. Brilliant, okay. Thank you so much. Um, great, okay, so hi everyone. Thank you for joining today. So this is actually the third time that I've delivered this webinar in the past six months. And it sort of evolved each time, uh, adding the ideas and approaches that I've been uh, that have been shared with me from colleagues across the UK and Ireland. Um, so the original idea was to ask colleagues to share their wellbeing collection titles and usage, and then to compile and share these in Google Sheets. Um, and then through working with the National Acquisitions Group. Uh, I wondered about embedding the information in the NAG website as part of our uh, learn and sort of best practices. Um, so I hoped over time with shared contributions, it could develop into a collective best practice. Um, today, however, I would like to use this opportunity to find out what those of you here today feel would help your library's wellbeing collection development and related activities with this sort of shared resource in mind. Um, can I, do I have control over the slides or am I doing a next slide, please? I think you might be doing a next slide, please. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so starting with a whistle stop tour of my history in wellbeing and mental health, I will then move on swiftly to some frameworks to put wellbeing work in libraries in context. Um, also, part of this context is considering models of disability and accessibility. Staff wellbeing, collaboration and building community are then the basis for trying to create a shared resource. And at some point there will be a slide with a Menti link to answer the question, what would you like to see from a shared resource for wellbeing work in libraries? So do start thinking about that now. Uh, next slide, please. So this area is really important to me as I've long been aware of my own mental health struggles and seeing the rise of openness around such experiences that differ from the norm over the past decade, ramping up even more in the past five has been really great. But I have also felt discomfort around some of the messages which are shared within this area of well-being, how it can easily be seen as a fad sort of area and connected to what you might call toxic positivity. So I care about helping these efforts in libraries because I think when they're put together with meaningful intention, they can have a really positive impact. And it seems that well-being work in libraries is often taken on by people with similar sorts of personal experiences which connect them to it. So I'm hoping that perhaps through the NAG platform, and that sort of it could include uh, the Taking Stock magazine as well, um, that we could develop something which supports this work and the people who are doing it. Um, next slide, please. So these are just some frameworks which I found helpful to bear in mind uh, when making sure there's sort of intention and meaning behind this work. And they can also help provide a background for funding and like resource uh, bids. Uh, so I started reading about bibliotherapy through an article by an academic in medical science at Lancaster University, which is where I worked up to a couple of years ago. And I've put some of her publications in a further reading slide at the end. Um, that's Liz Brewster. And this Wikipedia page, I say, I've moved it to the further reading slide. So <laughs> the Wikipedia page on the further reading slide is also a helpful review of the term bibliotherapy and it includes an interesting bit of library history. So I recommend you have a look at that. So bibliotherapy is both a clinical treatment and a recognition of the connection between reading and well-being. Um, and the Reading Well scheme began in public libraries, providing a book list and funding to purchase titles which are recommended by health experts. And then my mental health charity Mind has its five ways to well-being, which sort of gives you a nice holistic breakdown of people's wellness needs. Um, and with these sorts of frameworks as contextual building blocks, we can consider how we are best placed in libraries to contribute to well-being within this sort of uh, context. Next slide, please. So we can't provide 
but we can we shouldn't provide a meaningful well-being service in libraries without having an understanding of disability and access at its foundation so for around two decades now the social model has been the dominant way of thinking about disability where the person experiences barriers when interacting with the world as we have constructed it and before this it was the medical model which placed the disability on the individual's body and this thinking does still influence us today however much we have progressed in some areas so texts by healthcare professionals, such as those provided in the Reading Well scheme, can be complemented by first-hand accounts from people with various conditions and experiences. Um, the slogan, nothing about us without us, reminds us not to make decisions about disabled people without them holding an active voice in the decision-making room. The campaign hashtag own voices similarly highlights the importance of promoting diverse books by diverse authors, and that hashtag was particularly for um, neurodiverse authors. So the ways that we think about disability, neurodiversity and mental health has and continues to change, but this change takes time to filter into common understanding. So it can be helpful to be aware of how these con how concepts are changing, because these can affect our selection, management and weeding processes for a collection. Um, so this is one area of work that a shared resource could support as well. Um, next slide, please. So as I mentioned earlier, my observation is that staff who take on this work are more likely to have personal connections to it. And even if they don't, there is an emotional burden associated with it. Um, and the fact that frontline staff are already the first to bear this sort of emotional burden is being increasingly recognised with mental health training for frontline roles increasing, although I'm not sure if this recognition has been matched in pay or grade or sort of benefits. Um, and while more and more high level strategies across organisations are mentioning well-being, so you would hope that senior buy-in and allocated resources are a given, but we still need to fight for them, which is another area which could be supported by a shared resource. Um, senior buy-in and allocated staff and resources take the pressure off staff who often are doing this work voluntarily, despite it being a strategic priority for the organisation. And I've just sort of said, look after yourself, uh, try some of the wellbeing books, do a puzzle and delegate upwards, um, which is a concept I've recently become familiar with. Um, and it is also OK to acknowledge how the rise of these collections reflects underfunding in health and social care. Next slide, please. So wellbeing collections in libraries, particularly as they are sometimes promoted as stop gaps when support services aren't available, need to try to avoid implying that the patron is expected to cope alone. So signposting can be a really helpful library tool for building a sense of belonging, especially if the patron is new to the area. Um, and also consider how we and our students and patrons are dealing with an unprecedented amount of information about the world, often skewed strongly towards the negative. It is not negative to include resources about the climate or about inequalities, and especially resources which promote positive engagement with these big issues, like uh, Greta Thunberg's No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference. And uh, next slide, please. So this is the interactive part. Um, if you can please use the QR to go to the Menti on your device. And I will also put a code in the chat if you can access it on your computer now. So that's there. Um, and I'm going to keep going through slides, but the QR code is on each one. So, <laughs> um, so the question being asked is, what would you like to see from a shared resource for wellbeing work in libraries? And consider this in the context of it being hosted by NAG, the acquisitions group. So obviously, collection development is a really core part of that. I've put some examples um, of possible areas as well there. Um, and I've chosen the word cloud format which might not have been the best choice, but I really like the visual element. Um, so if you can keep your responses for, uh, sort of simple, um, and you should also be able to heart or downvote other responses, and I encourage you to do that as well. Um, so I'm gonna give you a, a few minutes to add something. And in the meantime, I will sort of show you some of what has come together in the past six months. Um, 
So yes, next slide, please. So this is where I started. I started with titles and usage from three institutions, Lancaster that I'd just come from, Exeter, and um, I think Queen's Belfast. Um, so I compiled them in Google Sheets in a really horribly manual manner. Um, and I attempted to sort of categorize them and added a note field. Um, and as it says on the slide there, the, the usage stats sort of can reflect popularity, but they don't necessarily indicate disinterest because they're just cumulative and they don't have sort of a, a date field in there. So that was something to bear in mind when that was being developed. Um, next slide, please. So here's a, a larger screenshot from this early effort. Um, and thinking about the topic field, I, I wondered if a shared vocabulary uh, for well-being either A, already exists, or B, would, and again, be a helpful part of a shared resource, um, because I basically just kind of did that off the top of my head. <laughs> um, next slide, please. So these are three books from Wellbeing Collections that I've read and can vouch for. And if pressed, I could write a short review of them. And so that's another example of something that might be a helpful shared resource because um, getting reviews is a really great way to engage with the collection. But it, on an institution, I mean, institution basis, it's, it's very hard. I've wanted to do it for six years and have that's never been able to happen because it uh, it's quite a lot to do when you've just got a small team of volunteers working on it. Um, next slide, please. So this slide uh, is sort of a compilation of comments from previous times that I've delivered this webinar. So uh, other people have had, said they talked about having staff wellbeing collections that are kept in offices and managed on trust. So obviously no usage. Um, and wellbeing collections held in non-library locations around campuses, uh, which is lovely as well. Um, and how people's collections have developed alongside awareness days. I'm sure a lot of us use uh, these sort of events, days, weeks, mental health, week, month, whichever one it is now, um, to develop what we have and as, like, as reasons to, to expand the collection. Uh, coordinating with student support around awareness events. Um, e-collections, so I've my experience is that e-collections don't get a lot of usage, but um, they're still positive to have because of uh, access and privacy um, and, and online and distance students as well so that they have access to wellbeing titles. And uh, Overdrive was recommended as a audiobook supplier and Brown's Books for Students, again, I think that was both for audio books overdrive slash libby again uh, was flagged as being good for cu having curated well-being lists and a magazine package so another like easy nice flick through uh, board game game collection jigsaw table sort of um nice interactive activities uh graphic novels uh, yeah audio books again so sort of expanding out of the usual genres to be more inclusive and just um and fun uh we've had a discord group set up but um it's really early days there's only a handful of us on there, but if anyone would like to get involved with that, that would be amazing. Please just email me and we'll add you, add you in. I can't remember how, but we'll do that. Uh, collaborating with academics, uh, someone really strongly saying, you know, we have, we may have uh, people with expertise in the university. If we can collaborate with them, we have uh, up to date um, and sort of, yeah research knowledge and collaborating with students union and societies and how important that is as well so we've had some really great interactions from from people over the now three times that we've looked at this um okay next slide please yeah i may have put my notes in the wrong order. <laughs> so these were my next steps after the first two sessions over the last six months. And I'm curious to see how the mentee results will change these plans. So obviously this was the getting the title usage, getting from more and more institutions um, and adapting to ideas and feedback received through these sessions, um, trying to have a regular yearly or 
every two years updated lists from people and then developing it further with people's tips and experiences, case studies uh, and developing that into some kind of collective best practice resource and yeah, reflecting the needs in different types of libraries libraries because obviously I'm from a HE library but um well-being collections can be across all sorts and beyond uh so next slide please that's the one I was expecting before <laughs> so um I don't know if you want me to share or if you can open the page yourself <laughs> uh, I'll try opening it <laughs> I have cool. to unshare and then we see share. what happens yeah Oh, it's looking lovely. I've had 26, 26 people have submitted, which is amazing. Thanks so much um, to everyone here. Uh, while you're looking at that, I'm gonna glance at the chat. Oh, everything's good. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Amina. Um, for the recording's sake, Amina says um, they would highly recommend books published by New Harbinger Publications CA and put the um, the link to the publisher website, newharbinger.com. Thank you for that. It's not actually letting me look at the results. It's just prompting me to. OK, I will share my screen then. Oh, you've disabled screen sharing. I didn't think this through. <laughs> Jenny, are you about to um, yeah, fix it? <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it puts people in an unusual order. There we go. It's fair. I'm trying to make sure I can see them now. Okay, there we go. I'll do. Share screen. That one. Okay, someone confirm if you can see this because I've lost Zoom. Yes, <laughs> yes. Amazing. Thanks, yeah. guys. Um, I want to zoom in a bit, really. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but this is, I haven't done this very often in my life. Oh, that's not working. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. I'll just leave it like that. Um, okay, so it's absolutely great to see how many things has come through and because some of them are bigger people have been putting the same stuff in I really appreciate that popular titles okay that makes me feel um like the title usage list was something that is actually would be helpful to people so that makes me feel a lot better um uh, recommendations sort of similar I'm just sort of glancing through but I will uh I'll use this and hopefully keep using this and get more uh, input and what people would actually really appreciate because basically that's that's what I want, what I want to achieve here <laughs> um so I can stop sharing basically just say uh, thank you so much um for for um being engaged in that I can't seem to <laughs> unshare oh there it is Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's all right. It was, it's always a brave move, isn't it? To do something that's interactive. Naive, I might have gone with, but yes, thanks. <laughs> so you did really well there. Well done, Al, because, um, you know, that that's it, it adds to the variety as well. So I, I think, it's, I, I know whenever I try and use Menti when I'm teaching, I'm always worried that it's not quite going to work as it should. Um, so so well done. Right, and, and finished perfectly on time as well. So that's brilliant. Oh, so we've got, um, we've got five minutes. Uh, Susie, are there any questions out there? It's Jenny, um, but the question is actually from Susie, who's asking, Sorry. Um, is, um, is well-being part of your role at Exeter or are you doing this on the side just because you're interested in it? It's a good question. So at Lancaster, it was a big part of my role. Um, and so when I came to Exeter, I sort of brought that along. I had the title list and we use that to refresh the collection we have. Um, but at this point, yeah, I've sort of I'm I'm now more doing this as part of NAG, I think. Um, I think I'm really interested in the idea of having something collective, having something shared uh, 
even if it was just another way to share things like we're doing today or the case studies, people's experiences. So again, um, you know, if anyone wanted to write about what they've done um, and we can pop that in taking stock, that would be amazing. Um, but yes, it, I'm just really keen to have something that takes the pressure off a bit and supports the work, but without taking the onus off like the senior buy-in and um you know funding side of it this isn't supposed to take the pressure off the senior side if anything I hope that it gives more uh you know data to back up why how important this is and stuff um so yeah that's the idea <laughs> thank you Susie okay any more questions from you Jenny nope. no right okay well thank you so much Elle that was great